Hey guys, I know this is something different than what you're usually used to with this channel and all, but I wanted to try out something different for a change. So today, I'm going to be reviewing, or I guess, analyzing, one of my favorite games ever, Naissance. It's a game about... Well, listen, here's the hard part. Naissance doesn't really have a story. Well, not in the traditional sense, anyways. There is no dialogue in the game. There are words, of course, but only for the chapter titles and for one specific easter egg. There isn't any combat, there aren't any enemies, and the only character is yourself. So if this game lacks all these essential elements, how is it that it's one of my favorite games ever? Naissance is about exploring this strange, abandoned world you find yourself in and some facets of this world are best discovered on your own. This is where the spoiler warning goes. My first playthrough of this game took a little under 4 hours and you could easily beat it in one session. Best of all, the game is free on Steam. It is highly recommended that you play the game first and then come back to this video. Trust me, this is an experience you don't want to have spoiled for you by a video. If you are at all tired of the same old AAA game over and over again, play Naissance. Okay. Time to talk about the game. Where do I even start? The graphics are pretty good. Uh, okay, uh, let's talk about the story. The opening cutscene starts with you running away from this floaty worm thing who doesn't actually come back until the end of the game, so... What? Then you fall into a pit and... Oh, that was it? <laughs> well, I'm sure things will be explained eventually, right? Right? Yeah, right? Yeah! In any normal game, they put you in control on some super cool, super pretty thing to show you what the game is all about and what you can expect from the rest of your time playing. Most games like to use this moment to show off their pretty graphics so you can look and go, wow! The Uncharted series, well I guess in all Naughty Dog games, they use cool environmental cues like lighting or color to show you where to go. Usually when you start a level, you have a clear indication of where to go. It's a simple trick that literally everyone knows to point your players in the right direction and help them to not get lost. If developers do these things to set up your expectations for the rest of the game, Nissan says fuck that and just points you at a big gray wall. You're actually facing the opposite way you're supposed to go, through the door behind you. So if what I said earlier is true, then the message Nissan is trying to tell you is that this game is going to be weird. You're gonna get lost sometimes and not know if the way you're going is the right way, but but trust me, that that's part of the experience here. You're supposed to feel lost and afraid and maybe even shit your pants like twice. I don't know, man. One 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 room said all that. Man, what what a talkative guy. Speaking of that door, or I I guess it's it's not a door. It's like a like a hallway. But the but the doorway. Okay, yeah. Remember the doorway? Well, it's it's completely shrouded in darkness and. Once you go in, you don't actually know where you're going until you come to the first floating orb. This is another cool trick about lighting, like with this famous example from The Last of Us. The spotlight is pointing you at where to go, making sure you're not lost or whatever. Gamers have evolved over decades to always listen to level designers and follow the light. Well this time, fuck you, you're going to have to take a leap of faith in order to proceed and we're not even 10 seconds in. You follow the light orb up this tube, which seems pretty weird when you're first starting out. It's completely dark and you're not too sure which platforms you can jump to. It took me a couple of tries to do this my first time. And when you're done, the light orb floats up to a platform you can't even reach. It looks like there might be something up there, but I, I can't jump up there. This is great because you've been tricked again. Just before, the game was training you to take a step into the darkness and You'll find the right path, but then they re-tricked you into following the light like in The Last of Us. Whoa, game! I didn't know I would need a fucking bachelor's in physics and biology to play this game. Anyways, where you're supposed to go is through this little hole on the wall, which uh, I guess is kind of illuminated, so it's it's really not that hard to miss, but whatever, y you know, my point still stands and all that. After going through a couple more tight corridors and small squeezes, you come to a small hole in the wall, showing you the adjacent room. You hear a small sound kick up in the background. And you're like, what's, what's, what's this? This, this be something special, ain't it? 
And you be right, my dear viewer, cause you can go straight through the hole next to the window and go into the room, whoa! But then the sound starts getting louder. And you get a creeping sensation. Maybe I shouldn't be in this room. Like, maybe something bad is gonna- HOLY SHIT! Ah! What's the purpose of this? What secret gamer law did Nasons break this time? Uh, none, bro. I'm pretty sure this only happens to confuse you and make you second guess yourself. And yeah, it did a good job too. Look up any let's play of this game on the tube and see people freak out about this fucking harmless room. They tell you not to walk into the light, but hey, science. What even was that? Is this like a test chamber? I have a feeling I shouldn't walk in here when it's super bright. I feel like that's gonna fry me. Now, I'm not trying to say that I don't trust the light, but that's totally what it is in this. You know what? I'm not gonna walk in the light, I'm gonna probably die. That chance it seems like a time thing. Alright, well, there's no going back now. Oh dear. Well. Maybe it's for the puzzle. Maybe it'll lift me into the sky and up here. Uh, uh, uh. Take me into the darkness! And you know a game is good when they make you scared of something that isn't even there. It's the uncertainty. The, it's the uncertainty that scares us. Our gamer brains have trained us to fear certain things. Similarly, you know that whenever all the sound cuts out in a horror movie, that a jump scare is about to happen. It's in like every horror movie, but. You can easily subvert expectations by simply not doing the jump scare and not ruin the tension and you'll be heralded for generations for being a horror master man. <coughs> by the way, it took me a while to figure this out, but there's actually a, a door on the other side of the room that opens up when the lights turn on. It's so fucking bright you can't really see anything and you have to find your way over there in the blinding light to escape. And when you do... Naissance is full of moments like these, where it's just you, usually with some giant vista being revealed to you, and you just gotta take it all in. It's pretty beautiful. After this is, I think, one of my favorite sequences in the game. This is technically the first puzzle in the game. You walk down another dark hallway and find another one of those flirting, <laughs> flirting orbs. <laughs> you walk down another dark hallway and find another floating orb. You follow it like you did the first time, but it leads straight to a dead end. You touch the ball again and it floats backwards, back where you came from. Then you see that the light illuminated a little notch in the wall to your left, and BOOM, there's another light. This game is a master of using lighting and shadows to communicate wordlessly with the player. And trust me, this shit, this shit is way harder to do than it looks. This little square area is even, is, uh, this little square area is an even better example of this technique. You don't really realize you're going into a circle until you see the little dots on the floor telling you you've already been here. And I didn't even see the doorway until my second time around the loop. This is a really cool idea that I wish more games played around with. Like Fear! That game has so the perfect guys, lighting for this kind of shit. Um, <sighs> oh well, at least we always have Tree Pang too. After this we get an even cleverer 
usage of lighting. There's this room with a light floating across one of the walls, obscuring parts of the areas you need to cross in darkness. If you don't see where you're supposed to go when the light was passing over, you kinda just gotta wait. Or if you're cool, just fucking go for it and fall to your death, maybe. But just think for a second how easy this would be if there wasn't a moving light. You wouldn't even have to put any effort in at all, just jump to the next platform. But the light adds that extra dimension to it. And most of the time the light goes away too fast, so you just have to trust that where you're going, there'll be a platform down there. Next is this big long puzzle thing that you have to do. There are two doorways and you have to go through and activate one thing on either side to progress. I'm not going to get into it, it's, it's just a bit of filler. Well, it's not really just filler, it's teaching you how these shadow blocks work, how, how they turn solid when there's light shining on them and you can pass through them when they're in the dark, which does come up later, but it's good that they're- <laughs> I said God in the, in the, in the script. <laughs> I'm not gonna get into it, just- oh fuck. I'm not gonna get into it, it's just a bit of filler. Well, it's not- uh, Well, it's not really just filler. It's teaching you how these shadow blocks work, how they turn solid when there's light shining on them and you can pass through them when they're in the dark, which does come up later, but it's good that they're teaching it to you now. The other one can't really be called a puzzle because you're just running and jumping over platforms. But again, the light ahead is moving faster than you are, so you just have to make a judgment call again on whether you're at the hole or not. They're pretty small jumps, so it's still a little forgiving. Oh, I guess now I should get into the running mechanics in this game. That's right, this game has running mechanics. Like in some other innovative genius game, right? Just you wait, walking simulator 2020, you'll get your own fucking video in the future. You probably saw some of it in an earlier clip, but when you hold down shift to run, you have to manage your character's breathing by pushing left click at the right time. When you hear the breathing in, you have to click. If you don't manage your breathing, you run out of energy pretty quick and have to stop sprinting to catch your breath. There actually is a circle that comes up in the middle of the screen that tells you when to click, but it always happens when your character is breathing in and I already knew this in my second playthrough, so I turned it off. After this little puzzle section, you get your first glimpse into where you really are, or rather what you're trapped inside. Since we're mostly done with all the tutorial stuff, we're going to go into a little more broad view about this game. Or uh, wh what it's actually about. If you haven't already, I'll warn you one more time, this game is seriously worth experiencing for yourself. Please play the game before watching the rest of this video. You still have a chance to get a fresh perspective on the rest of the game. If you don't care, or already have, let's continue. At its heart, Naissance is about discovery. You soon realize after playing just for a few minutes that the game isn't about the story or the gameplay, it's about the world. There's no big reveal at the end of the game telling you exactly what happened and how this place came to be and who you are. It's all up to the player. I was filled with more intrigue while playing Naissance than I have with any other experience ever before. Even Pathologic gives some hints as to what's going on early in the game, but here it's just nothing, which is really engaging. Who exactly was this puzzle created for? Who built this giant sewage system? Who came to drink at this bar? Who lived here? What the fuck is this? And this? And what were these jail cells holding? There isn't a definitive answer to any of these questions, which is kind of scary. You don't see any other people in Naissance. There may be others out there, but you can't reach them. I don't even think that there are actually any living things you see in the game. You don't even see your own player, ever. You feel alone. What is this place? Why was it built? And who did it? 
Were people seriously supposed to live here? As Jacob Geller put it so elegantly in his video, I felt like an outlier on a graph with no other points. A moment that summed this feeling up nicely happened to me pretty early on in the game. I came across this giant set of stairs, and I really didn't know which way was the right way. Again, you can't always trust the light in this game. But then I saw it. A stairway with just a whole middle section missing. How did such a giant oversight happen during its construction? Who is supposed to climb stairs like these? The answer is no one. This place wasn't designed for anyone, or that's how it feels. It was just thrown together for the sake of existing in the first place. There is no purpose. There is no larger picture we're missing here. It just... is. How long it has or will be is irrelevant because it's here, now. What can you even guess at with so little hints? Aliens? A future corrupt government organization? But what's a kingdom with no people to rule over? With so little information, it can be impossible to form even a minuscule conclusion. But that isn't the point of Naissance, anyways. There isn't a single natural thing in Naissance. No trees, no grass, no plants, no animals, no people. I don't even think I saw a single drop of water in the game. The whole world has been overtaken by the concrete jungle. There are no skyscrapers, because the whole earth is just one big skyscraper now. It's terrifying. I don't think I've ever been scared by a building before, but Naissance made me afraid of them. I think my favorite moment in Naissance is about at the halfway point. You first come across this rotating rod thing, and you think again that this must just be some cool set dressing. Something neat to look at, but you have to climb it to progress. You hear a fast beat pick up as you dodge the fan blades, but nothing too exciting yet. The interesting part comes when you find a rod bigger than the rest. The beat picks up again as you progress, and you're taking your time to not run into the fan blades. But there's a fan behind you too that's increasing in power. I had to get sucked into it and die to figure that out. As you travel further down the rod, the speed increases and blocks start flying off the wall and getting sucked into the fan, all while the music increases in complexity. You start running to escape the fan, the wind tugging at your clothes and pulling on your hair. You have no time to wait, you need to go. The staggered singing scratches at your ear, telling you to go faster. The breathing of the song is messing with the tempo of your clicking, it's getting harder to move, you need to go. You don't know if you'll make it out or not. The wind's getting stronger, your feet start slipping. Thank you for watching. If you like this change of pace, leave a like and a comment so I know you like this kind of thing. If you have the time, watch Jacob Geller's video on Naissance too. <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you.